Well, greetings, this is Trev from Online PC Learning. Thank you for joining me. We're having a look at how we can create our basic roster using times. So in our first tutorial, we had a look at setting up all of the shift codes in here. And we set them up as tables. We've got five tables and one static named range that refers to data in the table here. If you haven't watched that video, you'll need to go back and do that before you proceed with this video. I'm just going to show the ribbon and we'll move on now. We're going to set up the times sheet. I'm going to show you how to start setting up this time sheet. There's really not a lot involved. And in fact, these two rosters that I'm showing you here with text and also with times are quite basic. And I think you'll be able to grasp how they are put together very quickly. Now, with regard to this sheet, the first thing we need to do is to show some headings and the formula bar, and we need to make sure that it's not protected. So I'll unprotect it. Now, what we need to do is to start to set up our block of data in here. Now, if you're using the formulas that are on the web, you'll probably want to start with where I've started, which is C5. And that's a merged group of cells, goes all the way through to G5 is the next unmerged cell. And I've just put that merged block of data in there so that you can put the name of your organization in. So we're starting here at C5, our first cell there, and our last piece of data, our last, very last one, I'll go to the next one across from it, and the next piece of data is going to be Z41. So Z, and it will be 41. It's actually a merged cell in there, it's Z41. Cordon off that block of data because that's what we're going to be using. Now, if you want to have more names in here than I've put in, well, then you just add more in. That's not going to be a problem at all. But I'm going to show you now how we set up this section at the top here that deals with our dates. First of all, we're going to need a starting date. Again, I've merged two cells, E6 and F6. Merge them together and we formatted that. If you go to Format Cells, you'll see that that is set up as a date, just the standard date format for wherever you live. Okay, so there's our date. Across here, we've again got some merged cells which just show the start and finish times. So you can leave those or put them in if you like, and then our week underneath is one big merged cell. So that's just basic. We can see that we're just setting that up on top of our single cells here that show our dates. So the end of this header block is at C9. And now we move on to using single unmerged cells. And we'll do that all the way through now. Nothing will be merged. We don't want to merge anything, anything at all in this section that we're looking at here where we're doing our roster and our calculations to the right. Big mistake people make is merging cells in the center of data blocks. It is like a roadblock to them. It's suicide. Now, first thing we have is name, grade, payroll, FTE, and meal. And in fact, it should be the other way around. It should be meal in here, and it should be FTE in here. Now, FTE just stands for full-time employee, and that's showing whether someone's working full-time or part-time. 0.8 means that they work eight out of 10 days. Now, just before I show you how to create the dates, into here, again, into E8 and F8, merge the two cells, and we're going to put some data validation in. Now, the data validation that we're putting in here is that static named range that we created for our table area. So remember, that was called category. So if we go in here and have a look at our data validation, let's do that, we'll see that we're using that static named range we created called category. So we go to list, put in there, to, to add this in, you can see it's showing up those three or four bits of information in the table. And if we push F3 key down and choose category, there it is there, that will populate that list for us. So now, even if that list grows or shrinks, it will always automatically be added to our data validation here. Now the smart thing about this, every time we change list here, the name that we're putting into this cell is the name of one of these tables. Remember this table name, we'll put this so you can see it, was early, this table name was late, this table name was night, and this table name was other. So we can see what's happening here. 
that we're going to refer to that to populate the data validation in here. All right, well, let's do that. So pop, highlight all of the cells that you want to have the data validation. All of the cells for the two week period, go to data and then to validation. And you notice it just simply says, we go to list again and it's a formula that we're putting in. It's the indirect function, which is turning the value of that cell into text. So it's going indirect E8, and that is an absolute reference. So indirect E8 means that whatever is in that cell in E8 over here is what will be in our data validation. Now, because that is the name of the table called night, early, late, or other, we're going to be populating it with the contents of that table. Very clever and very easy. And that's how you can put a table into data validation by referencing a name on the sheet. That is one way you can do it. The other way is to create a static named range of that area and then put it in. So, so all you need to do is add that formula, click OK, and now when you choose night, you'll only get night shifts in here. When you choose early, you'll only get early shifts in here. And when you choose other, you'll only get the text for other shifts in here. Very simple way to create cascading data validation. Now, having said that, let's move up and I'll show you how to do this date block here. These cells right through here are all going to be formatted as dates. See that area that I've highlighted just there? All highlighted, all formatted as dates. Custom formatting in here for our dates. Let's have a look at what it is. This simply says, if you go into here, it says equals E6, which is the starting date here. The next one, if we go over, says equals I9, which is this cell here. So equals I9 plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Plus one. But you notice it just puts the day in. Why does it just put the day in? Because we've got custom formatting in there. I'll show you that custom formatting. Format cells, and here's the custom formatting. So here it just says day. If you wanted to put day and month, for instance, you just put in day mm for month, and it would show you the day and month. So now you see it's showing you day and month. That's not what we want. It might be what you want. It's not what I wanted in here. So put custom formatting into all of these to just show a single day. Right click, choose format cells, choose custom, and just type the letter small case D, and that will custom format those for you. Now, our formulas up in here, this just simply refers to this. So you'll notice it's saying equals I9. Now, you've got a choice here. You could either say equals this cell here, or you could say equals this one here plus one. Because remember, these are dates. We're dealing with numbers here. These are actually dates. Okay, so all we need to do is put our formatting in for here. What is the formatting? I'll show you the custom formatting for this. Custom formatting, all it is is day, day, day. Three Ds means it's going to give us the first three letters of the day. So that's pretty easy to set up. So as soon as you change the date into here, this whole data set here is going to change. And then week one and week two are just text. But up here, we're just referring to the starting date here, this cell. And our finishing date here, we're referring to a Sunday date here. Starting date here, we're referring to the Monday. Finishing date here to the Sunday once again. So very easy to set that up. I'm sure that won't present a difficulty to anyone. That's how you set up the header section through here. Now over to the left, you're going to need to put whatever you want in here for your staff. And really, you know, what you put in here will be different to what I put in. I work in, in um, a hospital, so there's going to be um, hospital data in here. But however you set your staff up, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You can calculate night duty in here as we do or whatever in this basic roster. But now over to the right, let's have a look at the formulas that we're now going to use to look up and do a count of the values that are in here. So first of all, we'll click into our early cell and all these formulas will be up on the website. So we'll just click in here, we'll have a look at the arguments involved in here. Here's our count if, and all the count if uh, function does is ask for a range, and you can see the range highlighted there. There's your range, and then it asks for a criteria. Well, what is our criteria? Well, because our criteria has got to be text, we're going to go less than 1,200 
and then the wild card, which means anything starting with 1,200. So in other words, we're going to be counting anything less than 1,200. That will give us all our early shifts. Simple count. I will escape from that. Let's have a look at our next one. A little bit more complicated. This time we're going greater than, there's our range, there's our criteria, and this time we're using minus another count if. So we're going greater than 12, and then minus greater than 18. So we're picking up everything between 12 and 18. Okay? And again, we're using the wild card to make sure that we're just using the starting figures in our text block. Our next one is night. I'll just escape out of that. Our next one is night. It is greater than 18 or equal to 18 minus anything that is text, which is greater than or it should be greater than or equal to A. So that's how we count our night. And of course now, of course, you can see how we're going to do the other. It's just count everything that is greater than A. So anything that is text, because text takes precedent over these values here over our numbers. So it's going to be counting everything greater than A. We'll exclude all the numbers and only give us the text. Criteria, the range again is standard and greater than or equal to, it should be A. And we'll change those formulas all the way down. So that's how we set up our count if formulas for the right hand side. And that gives us a count of the staff that are working for those days. Now at the bottom, I'll show you our formulas here. At the bottom we have the same formula, count if. We'll put our cursor in there so you can see it. There's our range. Let's pull this up a little so you can see. There's the range that's there and the criteria less than 12. And again, we're just using the same criteria through here. And that should be equal to, again, notice that error a minute ago, enter. And this one over here will be greater than or equal to A, in case any of our codes start with A. Now, all we've done here, to the left of that, we've just put in a total sum. A sum function just it requires a range. So we're only summing one number here. So just put in the range. You can see it highlighted there. And then you can just copy that down. Over here again, we just put in the sum function to give you a total over to the left. Now in our next video, that's about enough for this one. In our next one, I'm going to show you how to finish this off by putting in the conditional formatting to be able to uh, finish off the kaleidoscope values in here. So changing whenever you put in a, a, um, a shift, it's going to color code it for you as well. I'll show you how to do that. And also we're going to have a look at the formulas involved in creating our hours because we know when we're adding hours here, we've got a total of hours changing for us. How do we do that? Well, that'll be in our next tutorial. This is Trev from onlinepclearning.com. Thank you very much for listening. And in our next tutorial, we'll finish off this roster. The tutorial after that will show you how to convert it over to using text if you wish. So bye for now, and thank you for listening.